everybody. Well, we've had a number of new subscribers, so I just wanted to welcome everyone and explain a little bit about us. So I am Tatiana Thompson from Brom Bird Care. We're a Canadian company and we are inventors and manufacturers of the Squirrel Buster and the Squirrel Solution line of truly squirrel-proof bird feeders. This show is our way to connect with you and to share some ideas. Well, the fall is here and in many places it means a lot of precipitation and a lot of you are looking for weather guards or weather protection for your bird feeders. Well, when it comes to our bird feeders, there's only one model that we have actually a dedicated weather guard, the Squirrel Buster Plus. Uh, has a, a weather guard like this but with the other models unfortunately we cannot add anything to the feeder like this because it will interfere with the squirrel proofing mechanism um, what you can do instead though is you can buy um, other plastic or metal domes that you can hang above the feeder you can purchase them uh, on, in many nature stores or even online but if you're looking for a DIY project um, I've got something for you so I've got different types of bird feeders different models and I use different things for them so for the smaller models like the squirrel buster mini I'm using a pie plates that I placed right above the feeder and closed it with a hanger like this and then for the larger ones I use the pizza plates so as you can see for the squirrel buster suit because of the way it designed using this kind of plate actually gives me a flexibility and I can bend it down so when the water comes it will just fall down like this and then with the classic I have it straight like this but again working with these plates you can bend them and shape them and place them wherever you want depending on where your feed is located and what kind of weather you're experiencing so with these ones I just cut a little slit like this and then put them over the feeders so it's pretty easy and it works and I hope it helps Hi Debbie, you actually present an interesting conundrum for us feeding birds with seed. You see, whether one includes a seed tray or not, waste seed can still fall to the ground below the feeder where it'll accumulate feces from the birds feeding on the feeder above it. If one or some of the latter birds are pooping out feces containing parasite spores, bacteria and or viruses, then they will inevitably end up contaminating the ground below containing the waste seed. To my knowledge, no one has ever really addressed that problem. Having said that, I've never seen it as a problem myself throughout all the decades I've been feeding birds. The rule of thumb seems to be that if one notices sick birds around one's feeders, then one should take them down for several weeks until the disease runs its course. If you think about it, numerous animal species actually consume on purpose the feces of other animals. Rabbits habitually eat their own feces, and even parent birds eat their nestlings' fecal sacs. Here are my suggestions. Rather than placing the feces-covered waste seeds from the tray back into the feeder, why not just leave them there for the birds to consume? A number of birds prefer to feed on the ground anyway, so it would likely get eaten. But if that option bothers you, here's another idea, albeit more hassle. Why not suspend a second smaller tray immediately below the tube feeder to catch the feces and prevent it from coating the seeds in the larger tray on the ground? In that case, you can recycle your seed with some peace of mind, saving you money in the process. With a few nights of frost, our garden is officially dead. But it doesn't mean that we rushed out to clear everything and make it completely spotless. Quite the opposite. This year we planted way too many ground cherries, so when they were killed by the frost, we actually let them be like this. And then we discovered that squirrels, grackles, robins and catbirds were helping themselves to all the fruits that was lying on the ground from the ground cherries. So I'm going to just leave it like this for quite some time. And the same actually applies to your flowers and other plants in your garden. If you, your neighbors or your town officials uh, don't mind what some people consider a messy garden, then just let it be. Once a year I share a story about the impact of the city noise on urban birds. Well, I think it actually impacts us humans as well. But anyway, as for the birds, this noise stresses them out, it shortens their lives and it actually has 
force them to sing louder to compete with all the background noise. Well, a study conducted this spring and summer on uh, white crowned sparrows shows that with all the people working from home and with much less traffic around, the birds actually started to sing more quietly and their song has become a lot more elaborate. On average, these sparrows are singing 30% more quietly and because of the lack of traffic around, their song can be heard twice the distance that it was last year. I'm sure there will be many benefits for birds and wildlife if only we could keep fewer cars on the road and learn how to keep the noise down. Last year, both Dr. Bird and myself shared stories about the appalling practice of harvesting olives in Europe. It was very common for both Spain and Portugal to send these huge vacuums through olive groves that would just suck everything off the trees, including sleeping and nesting migratory birds. Well, it's taken almost three years, but with the involvement of BirdLife International and a lot of publicity to boycott European olive oils, the message was heard. Uh, BirdLife International got involved with local olive farmers and they found alternatives to harvesting olives without hurting any migratory birds. So as of uh, March 2020, nocturnal olive harvesting was completely banned in Spain and Portugal. And that will have a huge positive impact on helping migratory birds. And you can now safely consume Spanish and Portuguese olive oil, which is actually great news for our household because our favorite olive oil is from Portugal. As of last Wednesday, the Eastern Black Rail has been added to the endangered list by U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Uh, this bird has been in steep decline for years and has actually disappeared in some areas it used to nest in. The Black Rail, also known as the Feathered Mouse, only nests in very specific areas of marshland along the coastline of the Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico. With the rising sea levels and developers destroying their habitat, the rail has basically run out of places to nest in. Conservationists have also been fighting to get the bird onto the endangered list for about 10 years, but somehow U.S. Fish and Wildlife decided that now was the time, which is great. But so there are only about 2,500 birds living in the wild, so hopefully with this official protection they will have enough habitat to successfully nest and that will help them rebuild their population. All right, goodbye for now. And again, don't go crazy with your gardens. Leave some of the stuff up for the birds and the bugs. Take care, everyone. I'll catch you in two weeks.